we've already seen um, intuitively how the cozy and bargaining can lead to a more a efficient alloc allocation. What I want to do in this set of slides is demonstrate graphically how this might be achieved. So consider the situation where we've got a standard uh, marginal cost curve leading to a supply curve and a mar marginal willingness to pay curve that leads to our demand curve. In this situation, the price would equal $5 and the, the quantity provided would be 9,000 units. Unfortunately, there's a negative externality in this case valued at $2 per unit um, so that our marginal um, cost to society is actually greater than the marginal cost um, to the producer, the private marginal cost. Um, so at the market equilibrium, there's an external uh, damages that are produced um, indicated by this red area here, which is simply $2 per unit times 9,000 units or uh, $18,000 would be the actual value of that. We know that the efficient allocation would be the, where the marginal cost of society crosses the marginal um, benefits to society um, and that's at 6,000 units. So we want to see how can bargaining lead us to that particular outcome. So we start with um, the situation where the, the, the sufferers of the externality are uh, facing the entire red area indicated there. If they could convince the producer to reduce the supply by 1,000 unit, uh, their cost would go down by that green area there, or 1,000 times $2. Um, so they'd be willing to pay up to um, $2,000 to get the producer to reduce um, its supply by 1,000 unit. Would the producer be willing to accept that? Well, um, they're not making very much profits on those last units. Um, the the loss in um, producer surplus uh, by reducing their supply by 1,000 unit would only be that small orange area. So yeah, a deal could be made and they would reduce their supply. So what happens then? Well, now our supply is only uh, $8, 8,000 units rather, and the price has gone up a little bit above $5. Um, could we get them to reduce further? Well, it turns out we could because the the sufferers of the externality are still um, facing a rather large red area. Uh, they'd be willing to pay another $2,000 to get the producer to uh, reduce its supply by 1,000 units. And the producer would um, uh, forego um, some more producer surplus. In this case, the orange area has gotten a little bit bigger. Uh, but again, the what the sufferers would be willing to pay, that green area, is larger than the orange area, so another deal can be made. And as you can imagine, we could continue to make go through this process until we get back to the efficient allocation of 6,000 units. Now the question is, would it keep going? Could they keep going further and pushing the, the um, the firm back even further. Well, again, the uh, the sufferers of the externality are still suffering damages equal to this now smaller red area, and they'd be willing to pay again another two thousand dollars to get the uh, firm to reduce its supply by another one thousand units. Would the um, producer accept this deal? Well, probably not, because now you'll see that the orange area is actually bigger than the green area. So a bargain could not be made. And hence, um, we end up at the efficient allocation of 6,000 uh, units being produced, now at a higher um, equilibrium price of $6 per unit. Another question we might ask then is, what if we instead gave the right um, to uh, the sufferers of the externality? That is, uh, the firm doesn't have any right to produce any units because it's causing these external damages. Could a, a deal be made in the opposite direction? Well, it turns out it could because suppose that we started at zero. Um, the firm says, hey, if I could produce a thousand units, I could make a lot of money. I mean, look at all that surplus that I could make if I could produce a thousand unit. The price would be really high. Um, my cost would be pretty low. Um, I could make some money. Uh, would the, the public, the sufferers of the externality, be willing to accept that? Well, they're increase in damages is only that small red area now, the uh, $1,000 um, or $2,000 that they would suffer in damages. So um, since the uh, increase in producer surplus is greater than the, uh, uh, in than the increase in the cost, a deal could be made. And again, as you could walk through this example, you could see that the uh, efficient allocation could be achieved.
In this way, cozy and bargaining can lead to an efficient allocation under ideal situation where there's no transactions costs and no, no difficulty to bargaining and you can get everybody together. A, a, lot, a high um, a hurdle to achieve for sure, but nonetheless it represents an interesting uh, way to think about how property rights can form the basis of achieving efficient allocations. That's it.